am not ready, man. I am not ready at all. I went to the dog park today and started picking up other people's dog shit. Uh, just to warm my hands up a bit. I, uh, I didn't even use a bag or anything. I just picked it up and I was like, ooh. <laughs> Dude, I, I hate going to the dog park. I got a dog eight years ago, and I'm over it. I'm ready to not have one anymore. And you got you to gotta go to the dog park every day. Otherwise, it just tears your entire house up, and you can't let that happen because your mom only gets new couches every so often. <laughs> I went to the dog park today, and I just got absolutely smoked by a dog, and I just got taken out at the knees. And it was in front of so many people, and I got so mad but mainly because I was pissed I didn't get to see someone my size get taken out by a beagle. <laughs> Just hear them make the guttural Tibetan throat singing noise fat people make when they land on solid surfaces. <laughs> Just looking, <laughs> <laughs> That moment's making me turn my life around. I signed up for school for next semester, you know? I'm gonna get my vet tech degree. Uh, and then in five years, hopefully I get to put that little shit down, you know? I, uh, <laughs> that is the plan. <laughs> Dude, my girlfriend talked me into wearing colors today, and I'm regretting it. I feel like I just look like a Costco-sized bag of Sour Skittles right now. I'm just not a fan of it. I wish this shirt was black. <laughs> Sometimes I feel down about my health, you know, I feel down about where I'm at, and then I, uh, and then you hear the guy in the stall next to you taking a shit, <laughs> and then you go, oh no, I'm definitely way healthier than, uh, everyone out this Menards right now, you know, I'm... <laughs> That's not true, I'm never healthier than anyone out of Menards. Dude, I'm so unhealthy I got pulled over by an ambulance on the way here. <laughs> You ever been charged with diabetes before? That's fine. <laughs> it's not true. I did get followed by a cop on the way here. And does anyone else just like panic immediately when they start getting followed by a cop? It's like you could be doing nothing wrong. I was driving. I was like, what the fuck, man? I'm going five under. My hands are at ten and two. I'm not swerving. I'm braking smoothly. I'm not doing anything wrong. And then I hit a pothole and my vodka soda spilled everywhere. <laughs> I was like, God. I'm drunk driving again. <laughs> I'm drunk driving. You hear me mumble that shit? <laughs> yeah, I'm drunk talking now. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> I, don't, I don't drink and drive. I don't even text and drive. I think texting and driving is bad. I saw a guy texting and driving last week, and I got so pissed, man. I was so angry. So I, uh, I sped up. I tossed my unregistered gun in the passenger seat, uh, put my dick away, and started filming that prick. <laughs> These are all jokes, all right? I, uh, I did not put my dick away. I, uh, I don't know how else you're supposed to honk, you know? I don't. <laughs> beep, beep. <laughs> God, I wish. My seat would have to be so far forward. <laughs> I like that one I came up with just now. <laughs> that tag. <laughs> Comedy's about, uh, you know, le just letting people get to know you a bit, gaining your trust, you know? A <laughs> uh, little bit about me. I, uh, I recently found out that the violin and the fiddle are the same instrument. The only uh, difference is the amount of incest you have while learning it. <laughs> and it turns out I play fiddle. I, uh... <laughs> Trying to start a three-piece. <laughs> Where are my banjo players at, you know? <laughs> Dude, you know what I've noticed recently? I don't know if there's any metric to measure this by. But in the last like couple years, I feel like there's been way more women who think it's just cool to put their fingers in my belly button. And I, I don't know, <laughs> it bugs me so much. I, I'm dating a woman now and she does it all the time. And she's just like, why do you do that? And she's like, well, I just want you to know you don't have to be self-conscious around me. I love, you know, it's fine. It's like, cool, I wasn't until you said that. <laughs> 
And also, that's crazy. I don't just walk up to you and flap your arm fat and say, you know what, it's cool. I love you for you because I have low standards, you know? <laughs> Dude, one time I was having sex with a woman and I was doing the, you know, she was on top and I was like doing the thing, you grab the boobs for a little bit until it feels weird, you know? Because if you do it too long, it feels like a little kid asking for uppies, just like, <laughs> very uncomfortable. And then I saw her pop a finger in her mouth and I went, I'm about to get fingered right now, what the hell? <laughs> so I just like covered my chest and closed my eyes and thought of my ex-girlfriend. And then I just <laughs> slowly felt her move her finger around my belly button like that, that coin tornado at the zoo. You know that thing? <laughs> and then she just put it right in and it was exhilarating, man. It, uh, <laughs> she pulled it out and it went, and it was just nothing but cum and lint, man. It was... <laughs> cum and lint. That's <laughs> how you make paper mache. I, uh... <laughs> Ew, I know, I'm gross. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just horny all the time. I don't know why. I don't... I don't want to be. I don't want to be a horny person. I'm trying to get rid of like meaningless sex from my life. But every once in a while, like lizard brain Max just goes, Max, you want to come come? And it's just like, all right, now I'm having sex in a porter potty. This is great. This is exactly where I wanted to be. Gross is right. Dude, one time I was hooking up with this porn star and not, e not even a porn, it was just a chubby chick with an OnlyFans, all right? And she, she goes to me, hey, do you want to be in this video with me? And I was like, yeah, because I was raised by bad people. And uh, now like 100,000 people have seen my dick online, right? Or just like one guy a whole lot, you know? <laughs> it's actually me. <laughs> it's, it's the only way I can come is my own work. I don't know why I did it. I think I, I think I did it because I wanted like more fat representation in porn. Uh, and then I realized that I was filming a point of view blowjob video so no one was gonna know it was a fat guy in it. So I made sure I just framed my shot so my sleep apnea machine was in the background. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird, right? Having, C <laughs> having to use a CPAP, what the fuck, man? How are you supposed to date with that? Do you bring that up like first date or second date or you just wait for the first time she stays over at your house and you just roll over in bed like Bane from Batman? Like, I was born in the fatness. <laughs> I do a lot of fat jokes and it's because I am fat. And uh, I had a woman, I did a show in North Dakota and this lady goes, you gotta stop doing fat jokes. You're not even that fat. And it's like, lady, I am 315 pounds. I am fat, we're just in America, all right? <laughs> and more so, we're in North Dakota. So I'm, like I'm, a, I'm, in, I'm like an American sedan. That's my size. But in like France, I'm a fucking U-Haul truck, dude. I, <laughs> I can't fit clothes from Europe, which is insane. <laughs> I, uh, I got one of those angry ending massages last week. Uh, if you don't know what that is, that's uh, where you ask for a hand job halfway through, but you get screamed at in Korean and kicked out of P.F. Chang's. <laughs> Jokes again, all right? I, uh, it was a Benihana. It was, uh, it was. Dude, one time I was kicked off a ro uh, kicked off a plane and a roller coaster, actually. Dude, the ro dude, the roller coaster was humiliating. Getting kicked off a roller coaster as a little kid, and it happened because my mom wanted to take me on vacation. So, so <laughs> I am mumbling right now. Jesus Christ. My mom wanted to take us on vacation, so she took me to Vegas, which is an insane place to take a fourth grader, right? And it was like, I just sat there and watched her pull the slots and chain smoke Winston lights for about an hour and a half. And I was like, you know what? I want to ride the roller coaster, mom. I want to I wanna go on the stratosphere. I want to ride the roller coaster on the stratosphere. And I just begged her. I was like, mom, 
Mom, I want to go to the office. Mom, mom, mom. And she looked at me and she goes, don't call me mom in public. And I was like, oh, Jesus Christ, okay. Uh, Ruth Ann, uh, can we go on the roller coaster, please? And she bought tickets, right? We bought tickets to go on the roller coaster and we're waiting in line and uh, it's our turn. We get on, I sit in the seat and I put the seatbelt on and I'm struggling to do that. And I was like, oh, fuck, that's tight. Okay, time for the shoulder thing. And I grabbed the shoulder thing and I'm pulling it down and I'm sucking in as tight as I can. I'm just squeezing as hard as I can, I'm sucking in. And I hear a click and I was like, oh, thank God. And I exhaled and it was like when you crack open those croissant tubes. <laughs> <laughs> just like poof on all sides. And then like the hottest mix chick I've ever seen in my life came up to my mom and she started whispering to her. She's like, oh, ma'am, we're gonna embarrass your son to get off the roller coaster uh, because he only got one click and we actually need two clicks. To make. And she's like whispering because she thinks the fat in my ear is gonna block out what she's saying. And I'm like, I can hear everything and you are breaking my heart right now. So we got kicked off, right? We get, I get off, my heart sinks, my chubby little tummy eats it and I look back. And on the roller coaster, there's like three frat dudes, and they look at my mom and they go, hey lady, why don't you put your son on a diet so he can ride rides like a child's supposed to? And my mom looks at him and goes, uh, he plays college football! <laughs> and it's like, bitch, I am 12. <laughs> what? <laughs> you could have said it was a gland problem, you jumped right to roll tide, what the fuck, man? <laughs> wild parents, man. Like I was raising my mom insane, and then my dad, a drunk carpenter, so he was just very good at building walls between us. And, uh, <laughs> dude, when I was born, when I was born, they changed my name. My name was Jack for three months of my life. And then they had a dog named Jake, and they kept calling the dog Jack and me Jake. And their solution was, yeah, fuck it, let's change our son's name. Let's do that. <laughs> You know, not the deaf rescue who pisses in the living room, you know? <laughs> Our only boy, let's do that. Which is insane, right? It, it's also so funny to screw your kid's name up with a dog and then name him the most dog name of all time. Just fucking Max, man. That's insane. I feel like my dad was like a Bud Light away from being like, fuck it, let's call him Sparky. <laughs> I think my parents nailed it though. I think Max is a great name for me. A very Mastiff like. I love when people have the right names. Like, you guys know that kid who was thrown off the third floor of the Mall of America and survived? Did you guys know his name was Landon? <laughs> That's a great name for him, right? <laughs> Could you imagine if his parents would have named him Splat? That would have been bad. <laughs> yeah, my bad. <laughs> I gotta get a haircut, man. My hair is getting fucking outrageous right now. I don't know where to go for a haircut. I don't have like a specific barber to go to. I always just go to whoever I'm closest to at the time. And I live in North Minneapolis, so like my last haircut, I was like, you know what, fuck it, I'll go to a black barber, I'll support a black business, I might fuck around and meet Cedric the Entertainer tonight. And I, uh, I knew I messed up, because right when I walked in, all of them looked at me, and one of them audibly went, what the fuck, man? <laughs> like a mythical creature had walked in. So they're in the corner drawing straws to see who gets to fuck up the white dude's hair. I'm, uh, I'm in the waiting room reading Ebony, and, uh, one of them comes up to me and he goes, uh, what do you want, man? <laughs> and I was like, a haircut? And he's like, okay. And he just sat me down, he spun me away from the mirror and he turned his clippers on and I just started hearing <laughs> And in my head I'm going, this is not what the fuck I wanted at all. <laughs> but I didn't say anything because I'm an ally. And uh, <laughs> we get done and all the barbers, they come up and they start just hyping everyone up. They're like, oh hell yeah, dude, you fucking killed that shit. You crushed that, man, that's so fucking good. I'll never forget this. One of them came up to me, about a foot and a half from my face, and he looks at me and goes, you looking gooder than a motherfucker. <laughs> and I don't know if anyone here has been told they're looking gooder than a motherfucker by a cool ass black barber, but it is so tight, dude. I was, I was just sitting there going, oh hell yeah, I do be looking gooder than a motherfucker. Mm. 
And then he spun the chair, so I was looking at the mirror for the first time, and I was just like looking at the mirror, but staring back at me was just like a fat Puerto Rican kid. And I was like, God damn it, no me gusta. I do not like this at all. All right, that's gonna do it for me, you guys. Are you guys ready for your feature act of the night? The feature act of the night is the very 